I'm Ron. Thanks for checking this out. This is the third video in a series I've been doing on my latest project, The Way of Mountains and Desert. The previous videos are on a playlist here at my channel that are under that name so you can find them easily. If you don't know anything about this project yet, it started off with a commission from my good friend and colleague, Paul Barnes. Paul is a wonderful pianist, and he asked if I would write a large-scale piano piece for him to play this season. So as the piece began to develop, uh, it actually grew out of a Native American flute song, like so many of my pieces do. And uh, so what we're going to look at today is how the flute song itself was translated into piano music and became part three of this large-scale piece. Part three is called Love Song for This Earth. As always, if you enjoy this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really does help to get the word out. Now, at the beginning of this video, you heard a little bit of piano music, and you're going to be hearing a fair amount as this goes on. You'll see some video clips, too, of Paul Barnes uh, playing part three of The Way of Mountains and Desert. I want to emphasize at the outset here that this is not a performance. This is a rehearsal, and we were doing it by Zoom. It's a fairly early rehearsal. Paul hadn't even performed the piece out in public yet. Uh, and so the camera is angled so that Paul and I can talk to each other easily as we need to. And the audio that you're hearing uh, from the piano is very raw. And it's just whatever the microphone on Paul's computer picked up while we were working. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, as we go along. Now, the, uh, Paul was preparing when we were doing this rehearsal. Paul was preparing for performances in Xanthi, Greece and Houston, Texas. Uh, as I'm making this video in mid-August, those performances is, have happened, and uh, the next scheduled performance will be on a solo concert Paul is doing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, then towards the end of September, Paul and I do concerts together in Nebraska, and I'm pretty sure at this point that the September 26th concert in Lincoln, Nebraska is going to be live streamed. So I will put a link to my website in the description box and I'll keep posting links and, and concert information as it becomes available and confirmed. Now, as I said, uh, as the piano piece evolved, it actually grew out of a flute song. And uh, here's the first little bit of the flute song. You heard it at the beginning of um, the video, but here it is on a flute that will put it into the same mode that the piano is going to play it in. Now, even in that little phrase, I've done a number of things that a piano simply can't do. Uh, I made a slide from one note to another. Uh, I did things with my tongue that, a, a, you know, you can't really produce it exactly like that on, on a piano. I made actual crescendos, meaning I could start a note and then make it get louder. Pianos can't do that. You put a, a finger down on a piano key and the, the sound immediately starts going away. Now, what I have in back of me here is my studio keyboard. And I know on, you know, on our keyboards, we can do some things like that. We can bend pitches, we can slide them, we can make notes get louder. Uh, but uh, Paul is a, a master of uh, the classical acoustic piano. So think acoustic piano all the way through this discussion. Think of you know, a big, beautiful concert grand, because that's what uh, Paul's going to be performing on. So there are things that I can do on my flutes that Paul can't do on his piano. But there are all kinds of things that Paul can do on his piano that I can't do on my flutes. Uh, if I were to uh, find all the notes that uh, my, my flute can play and match them as closely as possible to piano keys on my keyboard, uh, I would cover, oh, I don't know, 14, 15 keys if I was lucky, but a great big concert grand piano like Paul's going to be playing on has 88 keys. So a piano can play a lot higher than my flute can. It can play a lot lower than my flute can. 
So, you know, rather than simply just saying, hey, here's this cool melody, Paul, play it on your flute, uh, I needed to start looking for ways to translate this song into something that makes sense on piano. Uh, big concert grand pianos have these wonderful sustained damper pedals, and you hold that thing down and the whole instrument just starts vibrating and resonating, and sometimes strings inside will start vibrating that you haven't even played just out of sympathy with everything else that's going on. So it's like it has kind of an onboard reverb unit. You know, it just resonates and rings and does all this glorious stuff uh, just from the vibrations happening inside it. So that's really cool. I can create the illusion of doing more than one thing at the same time on my flute. right? But Paul can actually do more than one thing at the same time on the keyboard. He can play many, many notes at the same time. He can play multiple melodies at the same time, something that uh, I can only pretend to do on my flute. And then, of course, the piano can just play really, really loud, much louder than my flute. If I were playing with a, with a big concert piano and I didn't have any kind of sound reinforcement on my flute, the piano could easily drown me out. So part of what was uh, going on with turning this solo Native American flute song into a solo piano song was thinking about translating it into stuff that makes sense for the piano to do. So let's hear a little bit about how that worked itself out in the end. Here is page one of Love Song for This Earth. Uh, there isn't any music that exists like this of the flute version. I usually don't uh, write down my flute songs in this kind of detail, but when you're wanting to make music that somebody else can play, you need to give them uh, the information to be able to do that. So it's uh, much more detailed here. I've marked on the score where the love song proper begins. Everything before that is transitional stuff to move from part two of the piece into the love song proper. Uh, now, uh, warning, there's a little bit of music geek speak coming up, so I'll try to alert you when that's uh, going to happen. Those of you who are musicians uh, and read music, notice that uh, the, the double bar here where the, um, where the love song is beginning, and notice that after that, there are no bar lines and there's no time signature. The only pacing indication is right above the line there where it says each of the whole notes that are shown in the, the lower stave should last about two and a half seconds. One of the things that I really love about our flute playing traditions is the flexibility, the idea that um, I'll play a song one way today and tomorrow it might come out completely different. It might feel, have a very different feel and a very different pacing about it. And notating the song in this way uh, allows Paul to have that kind of freedom from one performance to the next. He can change up the pacing if he wants to uh, make a phrase longer today than it was yesterday, and it's not going to affect the structure of the piece at all. So uh, what I'm going to do now is play the first little bit of this uh, on my flute right here. This will be very, very raw sound. I have done a studio version of the, uh, of the love song on solo flute. Um, I'll try to put that up as an art vid um, before our performances in Nebraska so that you can hear that if you want to. But uh, since, uh, since it's raw piano sound that you're getting, it's only fair that it's raw flute sound that you're getting too. So here's, here's the first bit of the song uh, just on my raw flute. So Paul gets to play a piano version of that melody, and then because the piano can do all these wonderfully resonant things, these, uh, these open note heads, these little circle notes that are in the other stave of the part, are uh, in effect creating a very resonant sound bed. He's asked to hold his sustain pedal down the whole time. So the piano just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And there's a recurring bass pitch that happens over and over again that becomes you know, kind of a drone for this whole section. So here's the piano version of what I just played.
was a really wonderfully expressive player, and I think that comes across even uh, on a rehearsal by Zoom. So hope you enjoyed his playing. Here is the piano version of what I just played on the flute. Now, as we were talking about before, the piano has a much wider range available to it than my flute. So at the big moment where the flute was doing descending scale patterns that maybe did something like this, you know, five or six notes, uh, as you'll hear the piano version of that, it's greatly expanded. Right, a lot more notes, a lot more distance covered on the keyboard. And also the resonances uh, in the bass are expanded as well. So at kind of the big moment of the translation, as much of the piano range is vibrating as possible. And uh, Paul gets a really glorious uh, piano sound even over Zoom and even over his uh, computer's microphone. So here's what that passage sounds like on piano. There are four parts altogether to the way of mountains and desert, and uh, altogether they run about 20 minutes. Part one is called To Water. Part two is called Songs of Gratitude for Desert Beings. Part three, which we've been looking at a bit today, is Love Song for This Earth. And part four is To the Land. Now, I did this video uh, about part three because uh, this channel is mostly about native flute playing, and part three is quite literally a translation of a solo native flute song into a piano piece. But actually, all four parts of this piece are based on fragments of the love song. We'll save that discussion for another time. Uh, I'll try to get uh, maybe something put together before I head off to Nebraska for performances, but it might have to wait until we get back. We'll see how that all works out. In any case, thanks for hanging out and checking this out. I really appreciate being able to share a bit about this project because I'm really excited about it. And I'm really happy that you got to hear a little bit of Paul playing piano, even if it is just from a Zoom rehearsal and through a computer microphone. So again, if you enjoyed this, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Check out some of the links in the description box. If you want to hear more of my music, you can go to the playlist of music videos here at my channel. And I will look forward to seeing you again soon.